Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with ADSR, and you're checking out a Mix Essentials tip and trick tutorial video. So this is one that you would think would be a no-brainer, but it's one that can often, I guess, get kind of forgot. It can just be forgotten about. And what we're going to be looking at is a practice that a lot of pop producers and kind of more of like a rock pop, just general pop production idea, and that is boosting the volume from your pre-chorus to chorus or if you're in an EDM song this will still work from like breakdown to drop boosting just the volume on essentially the master fader or your your two bus by about a decibel or a decibel and a half now to do there's a few ways you can do this you can actually ride the master fader in your DAW in the actual session that you're producing I like to do it once I've stemmed out some tracks so what I'll generally do before I get ready to send something to mastering is I will stem out the, the drums as a group, as a whole bounce, the vocals, and the instrumental. And then I'll kind of step away from the song, come back to it like the next day or so, and pop it back into a session with those stemmed out groups. And I'll apply a little bit of this, and I'll throw on like a little bit of ozone uh, just to kind of get an idea of what it's going to sound like compressed or with some limiting on it. And then what I'll do is I'll take those off, bounce it out, send it out to mastering. So you're going to hear something very different from me. If you've watched my uh, tutorial videos for a while, you know I do a lot of EDM hip-hop stuff. You're going to see more of a singer-songwriter track right now, but let's check it out. So the part that's going to go up in volume is actually at about bar. I think this track is in like 6-8, uh, so it's kind of weird. But um, it's going to happen at about bar 87 here, and I have the volume automated in on the vocals uh, and the uh, instrumental. So let's check this out. But can I tell you all my secrets that I don't tell anyone? No, I don't tell anyone. You shout it out, paint it red. Play your life with the butterflies in my chest. Oh. All right, so like I said, a little bit different from what you guys typically hear on these videos, but it's a good example to show you this because it's not a super busy drop with a lot of stuff going on that's like adding a bunch of instruments. It's more of that acoustic kind of singer-songwriter pop world. So what we have here, this is the vocal. And let's just solo it from where he kind of gets loud. I don't tell anyone, no, I don't tell anyone, you shout it out. Okay, so what I did was I just moved it up from 0.9 decibels to about negative uh, 0.9 to about negative uh, 0.3. I'd probably even take it just a little bit higher than that. Uh, I have a hard time hearing anything less than about half a decibel, sometimes even more if my ears are fatigued, which they are right now. But uh, what this is going to do is you're, it's going to make it pop out to the listener more. And if this was a synth lead in another track, it's the same idea. And it's just one of those tools that you can use to make a drop or make a course or any important element or section of your production or track to stand out more from the rest of the mix. Now, you don't want to do too much of this, obviously, because it'd be unnatural. And the reason why I like doing this, the last part of kind of my mixing process, is because I like to have some sort of compression on when I do this. And there's a sonic maximizer and some dynamic control occurring in Ozone 7 which is going to kind of tighten up the mix and squeeze it a little. And then I have Fab Filter Limiter applying just some real basic limiting, plus adding 2.5 decibels of gain. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm not very good at mastering. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I understand the basics of it, but I don't have the monitoring system to do it, so I'd rather send it out to a mastering house. But what I want to do here is I want to kind of mimic what the, uh, the compression and limiting would do to this change in volume from the quieter parts of my track to the, what I want to be the louder. So this is a good way to gauge how it's going to sound in the final product. Now, I didn't do anything to the drums, and I, I probably could have, but you can you can use this method in your drops, breakdowns, verses, verse to breakdown. Just slightly boost the volume. There are a lot of producers out there who will actually slowly increase the volume as the track goes as a whole. So maybe they'll be peaking at like negative 0.5 in the verse, and then they'll be peaking at negative point. Uh, like three, or maybe maybe point four. It maybe start a little less. Maybe maybe negative seven in the verses, and they'll be peaking around negative five in the breakdown pre-chorus section. Then your drop or course, you're up at about point one or zero, depending on how good your mastering chops are. 
and it makes the track sound like it's always going somewhere. There's a certain element of a dynamic push and pull to the listener, which is pretty appealing to our ears. So there it is, guys. Pretty basic tip and trick, but it's one you may have forgotten about. Maybe you didn't know about this. Definitely try it out. It helps and works wonders on a lot of different genres of music. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't signed up or subscribed to the YouTube channel on ADSR, definitely do that. We're putting out videos every week, so you'll see some cool stuff. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.